Hello, Music Technologists. I hope you're doing well and that you had a lovely Christmas and New Year and that you're ready to get stuck back in uh, with your learning, even though you're doing it remotely. Today, I have a lesson focusing around our understanding music aspect of the course. I'd like to first off revise different styles of music to see if you can remember um, the different styles of music that we can have. We're also going to learn about different melody and harmony concepts that would allow us to understand different features of the music. And finally, using your knowledge that you've learned today, you're going to undertake an exam style question about the concepts. So by the end of the lesson, we should be able to say that you can differentiate between different styles of music, you can identify key features of the music in terms of melody harmony, and you've completed an exam styled question. Okay, to start us off, what I'd like to do is to get you to guess the different styles of genre of music that I have planned for you. Uh, there's going to be five questions, and if you could write down the answer to the questions, that'd be fantastic, and then we'll go over them. I've put up a list of the different styles and genres that you have to know for National 5, um, and obviously you have to know National 3 and National 4 ones as well, so I'll leave them up whilst we listen to the examples. So here is question one. Number three. <laughs> West in Texas, that's where I long to be, riding on the prairie with a good horse under me. Three long years I've bummed around, my heart is sad and blue. I'm a going back to the woolly west where your friends are always true. And number five. <laughs> Answer should be number one, disco, number two, Celtic rock, number three is electronica or dance music, number four is country, and number five is punk. Okay, so moving on to our second learning intention, learning about different melody and harmony concepts. Now, I've recorded this about five times. 
and it goes wrong towards the end. <laughs> so we'll just deal, deal with it <laughs> and we'll move through together. I might put the wrong example, but I'll fix it as we go through. So um, when we're talking about different melody and harmony concepts, there's larger headings that I'd like to divide our concepts into. So the first one, we're going to have a wee chat about different tonalities. And I'm sure you know what tonalities are being major, minor and atonal, but just to revise them so you know exactly. So major being bright, minor being dull, and then atonal is our modern 20th century one, which is not major or minor and it has this kind of strange quality to it. Let's have a listen to major. Did a full 180, crazy, thinking about the way I was, did the heartbreak change me, baby, but look at where I ended up, I'm all good already, so moved on, it's scary, I'm not where you left me at all, so if you don't want... Okay, here is an example of minor. Okay, so that's our tonalities, major, minor, and atonal. So moving on to our next larger heading, where we've got uh, pedal points. So we can either have a normal pedal or we can have an inverted pedal. And generally, a pedal point is a sustained or continuous note. And the difference between our pedal and inverted pedal is if it's in the low notes or if it's in the high notes. So let's have a look at an example of a pedal. So here we have the right hand of the piano playing different chords. Where you can see in the left hand they're playing just one note and sustained on throughout all of the chord changes. So that would be an example of a pedal because it's in the lower notes. An example of different instruments that could play a pedal, perhaps if it was an orchestra, would be your double basses or your cellos or a low pitched instrument. In contrast to that, we have an inverted pedal where we have a high sustained or continuous note. And you can see here that the right hand of the organ is playing that high sustained note, whereas our left hand is playing different chords. If we were in an orchestra, for example, we could have flutes or clarinets or violins playing an inverted pedal as they are a high-pitched instrument. Moving on to the next heading, we're going to have a look at different scales and we can have chromatic, whole tone, um, or an arpeggio or a broken chord. Uh, but to understand our chromatic and whole tone scales, we also have to have a chat about semitones and tones. So starting us off, let's have a look at a chromatic scale which moves in semitones. So a semitone is the smallest distance we can have between notes and it's basically the next possible note you could play. So for example, C to C sharp or D to D sharp. Uh, when it comes to E and F, that is also a semitone because that's the next possible note you can play. And B and C is also a semitone as that's the next possible note. So a chromatic scale moves in semitones um, and if you're looking at the piano and if it was a piano that was playing it, then you'd be playing every single white and black key all the way up and then back down. So let's have a listen to a chromatic scale. <laughs>
to our next type of scale, which is a whole tone scale. So a tone is made up of two semitones. So we're basically moving from, in this example, a C to a D, as we've got one note in between. So that would be a tone, as you've got that semitone in between it, because you're making up of two different semitones. So in this whole tone scale, we're going C, D and E, but then we know between E and F is the semitone, so that's why we jump up to F sharp. Then we've got G sharp, A sharp, as we've got those white notes in between. And then we finally finish on a C again. So let's have a listen to a whole tone scale, which moves in the space of tones, which is two semitones. <laughs> we're going to talk about is an arpeggio or a broken chord. Now this is when we play specific notes of the scale. We don't play every single note on the way up and every single note on the way down. For example, if we're playing a C arpeggio, we're only going to play the notes C, E, G and then up to high C and then back down. So if we were to play any other arpeggio, you're playing the first, the third and the fifth and then up to the first again and back down. So for example, if it was C, then obviously you'd miss out D, play an E so F, play a G, then up to C again. So you're only playing specific notes within our scale. Now hopefully this is going to go right, because this is where it sometimes goes wrong. So let's have a listen to an arpeggio. That's the wrong one. Let's have a listen to an arpeggio. Let's see if I can get it to work. There we go, finally got it to work, sorry about the mishap there. Um, okay, so moving on, let's have a little chat about the next couple of concepts that we've got um, within this melody and harmony heading. So we've got glissando, modulation, pitch bend, and then cluster. So to start us off, a glissando is a slide between notes. So think of an instrument like the trombone or the harp or the piano, which would be really easy to slide between different notes. So for example, if you're going from a C up to a high C on a piano, you push one C, and then slide your hand until you get to the next one. Or if you're on a harp, you would pluck one string that was lower or higher and then slide between them, playing all the notes in between. So let's have a listen to a glissando on a harp. And I'm sure you heard there, um, our modulation, sorry, our glissando, which had that slide um, from a lower note up to a higher note um, and playing all the notes in between. So now let's listen to a modulation or a change of key. Now this is usually the cheesy moment in a pop song where everyone would stand up off their seats, start to walk forward, there'd be pyrotechnics off in the background. Um, it's a cheesy moment of a song and it usually raises up higher. So we're going from one key to another um, through a modulation, which is our change of key. Let's have a listen. Backstreet Boys, and I'm sure you could hear it in the middle of that excerpt where we changed the key um, and had a modulation. Next concept I want to talk about is pitch bend, um, and this is usually the annoying thing you can do in a keyboard um, on the left hand side where you can push it up or down. Um, so if you pushed one key down and then pushed, up, uh, pushed the controller up the way, it would raise the pitch. Um, if you pulled it down the way, it would lower the pitch. Um, if you could do this on a guitar, for example, if you pluck the string and then push the string upwards, it would make the sound go higher. Or if you pull the string downwards, it would make the sound go lower. Um, I've got a video for you to show you an example of pitch bend um, on the MIDI keyboard.
uh, is your example of pitch bend. As you can see, they're using the controllers on the left-hand side um, to push the pitch up ever so slightly um, or to pull the pitch down, down ever so slightly. Okay, the last example I would like to talk about is cluster. And a cluster is a group of notes that usually clash and don't sound very nice together. Um, and it's easy to identify on a piano, but it could be a cluster of notes that people are singing. Um, but let's have a listen to cluster, um, a group of notes that clash on a piano. So that is our cluster and hopefully those concepts we talked about today, um, despite the little bit in the middle um, going wrong, you are confident with all those concepts. So let's have a look at an exam styled question and this is a question from a SQA past paper and what I'm going to get you to do is you could write down the answers for me um, and then I'll go from them at the end. I'll just let it play through um, all of question one and then we'll talk about the answers. So. Question 1A, you're asked to identify the style or genre. B, you have to tick one box to describe what you hear from those concepts. C, again, one box to identify the prominent effect used. D, uh, one box to identify the style or genre. So let's have a little go at question 1. Question 1. A, listen to this excerpt. Tick one box to identify the genre style. B. Listen to another section of the same track. Take one box to describe what you hear. C. Listen to this excerpt. Take one box to identify the prominent effect used. D. Listen to another excerpt. Take one box to identify the genre style. Like she told
So there is one more question in question one, and this is 1E. And in this excerpt, you're asked to identify one feature in column A and one feature in column B. Um, so in column A, you're identifying the genre or style, and in column B, you're identifying the tonality. So have a listen to the excerpt. Though it's the toughest case I've yet to face, don't worry, I'm determined to succeed. Follow my lead, and yes, indeed, you will be popular. You're gonna be popular. I'll teach you the proper ploys when you talk to boys. Little ways to flirt and flaunt. Oh, I'll show you what shoes to wear, how to fix your hair. Everything that really counts to be popular. I'll help you be popular. You'll hang with the right cohorts. You'll be good at sports. Know the slang you've got to know. So let's start, cause you've got an art. So let's quickly go over our answers. For 1A, it should be disco. 1B, syncopation. C is reverb. D is 60s pop. And E, two answers should be musical and major. Now, hopefully you have enjoyed today's lesson, um, despite being in lockdown. And if you have any questions about any of the concepts, then please feel free to message me and get in touch. Um, I'll have something else up for you um, for next week. And I hope to see you back in school um, sooner rather than later. Keep safe. See you after.